Good afternoon folks, it's that bloke on a motorbike. I'm out again for another bimble round. Doing a little bit of filming. And we've got a, another fairly murky winter's day, but quite mild to say it is winter. So I just thought we'd do a, a little bit of a ride. I've got a theme to it. It is a uh, a ride that's going to look at one of the big disasters that hit South Yorkshire. So we just come up from Lady Bow Reservoir. I'm going to be turning onto Mortimer Road, better known as the Strines. But we're not going to go all the way across the Strines. We're going to turn right. We're going to head down towards Low Bradfield. Then we're going to go to High Bradfield, which, yep, it's above it. Uh, and then make us way down then to um, back down into Sheffield. So those that you know this area will probably be familiar with this part of the the road. This is the uh, famous or infamous Strines Road, which I've film coming in the opposite direction we're going to be turning off just around this corner here and we're going to head down towards Low Bradfield this is called Sugworth Road there are some absolutely spectacular views down the Loxley Valley as we go down here. We've got a series of reservoirs as well that we'll see in the bottom. You've got to be wary of vehicles coming the other way because it's quite narrow and some of them ride like uh, there's only them on it. So we just pause a second, there's a little folly over there which you can see. Can you see that little tower on the hill? That's uh, a folly and then that water down at the bottom there, that's the Top Industrines Reservoir. Goes better in gear, Dave. There we go. There you can see the uh, the folly a little bit better there, so let me just pull in and then you can have a look at it, can't you? Okay, you see it there, just in that field, that tower? Turn my head a bit more, see if you can. Just that tower just pointing straight there. So that would have... I should know the guy's name that it's named after, but I can't remember it. Um, but it's a, a folly, I don't know if it's something to do with the waterworks or something. But they did build quite a few of those follies. Um, I suppose really it gave people work to do when there wasn't any. turn onto a quite a tight little road now. It gets very narrow does this one. It's also a very beautiful countryside. It's one of those roads that I just like to pot around. 
has got quite a significance to uh, what I'm going to be telling you about. So over there, there is, if I can just clear those trees without anybody coming around that corner. Got some sheep there, am I right? Okay, so that's the Strines Reservoir there. And just a bit further down, there is another reservoir, which is called Dale Dyke. We should see that quite soon as we come round. So Dale Dyke's just down in the bottom of this valley. And it's quite a long, thinnish, triangular shape. Uh, that's not the original Dale Dyke though. The original Dale Dyke, there was an absolute terrible disaster um, and the reservoir burst. So we can just see it if I back up a little bit there. Okay, can you see that water down there? That is Dale Dyke. And in, I've forgotten the exact date, but in March 1864, during the day, um, they discovered that there was a crack and a quite a heavy storm and winds and one of the workmen going home walked across the front of it um, which was a, an earth bank dam with a wall and he noticed that there was a slight crack in it so they called the senior engineer who came up from Sheffield to have a look uh, by the time he got there you could put your your fist into this crack and then they sent runners down towards Sheffield um, the problem was though that the dam went I don't know how many million gallons of water there was but that all went down this quite steep sided valley and uh, basically washed away everything in its path because as it was going it was picking up trees and boulders and it's not just the weight of water when there's a flood like that it's everything else that goes with it so it came through the village down here Low Bradfield and then carried on building pace uh, the first person to die was a I think the baby was two days old, two weeks old. That was the first one to die. A lot of loss of life um, and a big tragedy. And as it gathered pace, obviously it gathered destruction and there were a lot of workshops and small mills and things down there, down the valley, it took all those with it. Uh, in one instance there's a report of three workmen who were killed as the side of the building disappeared but if they'd gone to the other side of the workshop they would have survived absolutely tragic and totally random as to whether or not you're going to get away with anything in those sort of conditions um, and it caused devastation right down in Sheffield One little village called Dam Flask just completely and utterly ceased to exist. It just took everything away. So it, it was a disaster. Um, rebuilt, or well, rebuilt Lord Bradfield, but they didn't rebuild Dam Flask. Instead, what they did was dam it and flood it. I made another reservoir. And then at the top of Low Bradfield, as if having the uh, the new Dale Dyke Reservoir built, if that wasn't enough, they decided to build yet another. So there's now two above Low Bradfield. So when it went, all that water would have been cascading down that valley, which isn't, it's steep, it's deep, a deep-sided valley and it's fairly steep sided so it's all going to be concentrated and flowing quite quickly down there so just drop it down into low Bradfield now and 
summer there's a, an ice cream man parked just down here Going round here and then up to High Bradfield. That engine does sound nice, doesn't it, when it's under load? Tell where you call it High Bradfield, can't you? Really, really can. Bradfield Brewery with a brewery shop. Cracking view across that valley, across the Loxley Valley. That one we can see through all the trees there. That's Dam Flask. Where in the bottom was the village that Unfortunately, got destroyed. So down in that valley, this water will be picking up pace. Like I said before, picking up the trees, the boulders, smashing through all the tiny little, you know, small workshops that were there, independent workshops, farms, taking it all with them. Pretty sure that I read that they said that the water was going at 18 miles an hour, faster than a Derby horse. Apparently, it said at the uh, the inquest. So you wouldn't have had any any chance of surviving it if you were caught in it. From what I've read, um, and I can't remember it all, but what it said was that you. Uh, you know, people were fleeing up the valley sides. One person set off, said they forgot the coat, went back, but actually managed to grab it and then come back up on the sides here. Another one of people passing each other out of windows to get out. And then down in Sheffield, it goes through a place called Mallon Bridge and then took a right at the end uh, in Sheffield Centre and continued through uh, and they even had the surge in Rotherham and Doncaster so absolute disaster so these little valleys were full of independent workshops there's another one at the other side of that valley called Rivlin Valley uh, which now there's a little river runs through it and it's a nature trail nice little walk for a, a Sunday Sunday afternoon something like that but if you go back you know now it's all nice and calm and tranquil but if you went back into history what you find is was anything but calm and tranquil um, there were lots of little workshops the water will have been powering machinery like drop hammers and they'd be making all sorts of things out of metal, nails or whatever and it would be complete hive of industry probably a lot of smoke and stuff and um, certainly very very noisy so what we look at today has been a nice picturesque little valley to go for a, a Sunday afternoon walk would have been 
a bit like Dante's Inferno with noise and everything going off around you The other thing you've got to think with this is that all the people who lost their jobs because of all the factories being destroyed as well as losing houses, relatives, friends all the belongings, there was no such thing as a welfare state so what they did was some people donated money um, I can't remember who it was now but it was some quite wealthy person said that they thought they thought that the right thing to do was that every worker in the area donate one day's pay to go and help the ones that have been affected by it so not only have a lot of them lost relatives, friends loved ones and belongings they were asked to give up a day's pay to support people who have been affected um, which I think they did so this is Malin Bridge now and it would have where we're going to be driving down the river is just at the back of the buildings you can see in front of us there that big building that one that says clothing on the side and cycling camping that's Tosho so between these buildings here between these buildings and those trees that's where the river goes but when it came down in flood it was the complete width of all this road and up that banking that must have been absolutely terrifying the noise alone must have been terrifying just ahead of us the river takes a slight right turn and there's photographs of buildings there absolutely devastated um, there's one account of some children so this is just on my right there now that's where it it all came to a head and then turned right and went right through the, the city and uh, like I say there's reports of one lady whose children were there and she went to find that the house was completely missing apart from one little bit and when they looked the children were fast asleep upstairs unharmed so miracles happen Okay folks, I'm going to uh, call it a day there I think for now So thanks for coming with me on this ride, I hope you've enjoyed it If you're a subscriber, thank you very much, it really means a lot If you're not, then uh, not a subscriber Please do consider it because it makes the channel more visible to everybody um, Drop us a comment below, I do love reading them and try to reply to as many as I possibly can Give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with somebody, all the usual bits and pieces. So if you're out on your bikes, keep it shiny side up. And uh, try and keep warm out there as well. So that's it folks for today. Ride safe and I will see you out on the road. Bye for now folks. Bye.